Finally tonight, in Cuba, it's good to be an artist. For almost five centuries, the lighthouse on the tip of Havana's coast has served as a symbol of this island nation, a country known for revolution, its time-capsuled cars, and of course, its music. But I've come to Cuba to find out about a new revolution, a revolution in Cuban art. Art has always been at the heart of Cuban culture. Under Castro, it became a tool to spread socialist ideals. His government opened free art schools and cultural centers for the masses. But in the 1990s, art became a tool for profit. After the Soviet Union collapsed, Cuba lost Russian subsidies, and Castro turned to tourism and U.S. dollars for economic relief. The Cuban art scene exploded into big business. For the first time, artists started profiting from international sales, and emerged into a class of their own. Marco Castillo is one of Cuba's most recognized artists. He and Dagoberto Rodriguez are in a successful art duo called Los Carpinteros, or The Carpenters, for their handcrafted objects and sculptures. I met Los Carpinteros at their home in Havana. These days, they're leading lives that most Cubans can only dream about. In a country where few citizens can even afford to fix their cars, Dagoberto and Marco have money to spare, and they've been allowed to travel in and out of Cuba to art events around the world. But before the art market boom, Los Carpinteros struggled like everyone else in Cuba during the hard times of the early 90s. No food, no transport, no public transport, no light. Uh... Horrible. Terrible situation, economical. Art materials were also scarce. So Los Carpinteros helped themselves to houses abandoned by rich Cubans who fled the island when Castro took over. They also scavenged the woods in their art school's backyard, once the site of the old Havana Country Club. Los Carpinteros used the stolen materials for their first artworks. Like this early piece, where they painted themselves playing golf, using sticks instead of clubs, a subversive comment on the upper-class Cuban lifestyle. Los Carpinteros challenged the socialist system using irony and humor, like this hot seat sofa and a jewelry case grenade. The international art world caught their first glimpse of Cuba's new visual artists at the 1994 Havana Biennial, a contemporary art festival that set off a wave of sales. There was this kind of frenzy in, in terms of the buying up of Cuban art. Before you left for Cuba, what you did was you kind of cashed out a bankroll of, of um, you know, several dozen hundred dollar bills and you just kind of kept that in your pocket and you just sort of peeled off a couple hundreds here and there um, when you entered a, a, the studio of, a, of an artist who you thought was doing really good work. Los Carpinteros were discovered at that show and their careers quickly skyrocketed. Today, their sculptures and paintings are featured in museums around the world including MoMA's permanent collection in New York. Any advance at 9,500. So it also sells at high-end auctions. 95, 95, nine. You know, their sculptures sell for fifty, sixty thousand dollars the uniques. Um, their big drawings sell for twenty, twenty-five thousand dollars That's an unbelievable amount by Cuban standards, when you consider the average Cuban doctor makes around $30 a month. One of their boldest pieces, The Fallen Lighthouse, sold to the Tate Gallery in London for $100,000. It's 
It's Los Carpinteros take on the famous Cuban landmark. Surprisingly, the government has let them cash in on art that criticizes Cuba's socialist revolution. No se supone que esto es un faro este horizontal, que esté tumbado, que esté sufriendo, ¿no? No se supone, eso nunca lo vas a ver. Y tiene que ver mucho con comentarios sociales, por supuesto. Me gustaría que este país fuera un país de derecha y conservador. Me gustaría que este país siguiera siendo un país socialista. Pero a los fanáticos de izquierda, me gustaría decirles que esto no es el paraíso que ellos sueñan. Esto es un país muy difícil y, y, que, y que tiene que cambiar. Speaking out about politics in Cuba can land you in trouble, but when asked what kinds of changes he would propose, Marco didn't flinch. Sí. Por ejemplo, una nueva cámara de gobierno para comenzar. <laughs> As Cuba has gained prominence in the global art market, the Cuban government has managed to improve its own image. Ironically, it was the United States that was now causing Los Carpinteros problems. In a few days, we're going to have an opening, and we don't have the visa yet. We had a show at the Guggenheim, we had a show uh, at, the, at the show in Tampa, which is a, a, a solo show, a big solo show of Los Carpinteros in the United States that is traveling now, and we were not able to go. So this is what is happening, but the work is still going on. Under President Bush, many Cuban artists have been kept out of the U.S. Los Carpinteros say the travel restrictions are undermining the cultural ties that they and others have been trying to build with America. It's not working in political terms. It's doing nothing. The only thing it's doing is uh, cutting the, the, the human interchange, yeah, interchange of ideas, which is very important in this moment for, for this country. For both countries, I for think. For both, yeah. While the world waits to see what will happen with Cuba, Los Carpinteros wait to see if their visas come through or if their art will still have to travel without them. When it was clear they weren't going to get their visas, I said, well, um, what shall I tell them in Chicago? Is there anything special that I should tell them? Um, they said, no, just tell them that we'll see them after the revolution. <laughs> There's more of the world to explore on our website. Learn more about the new face of the Taliban in Pakistan. Find profiles of Russian opposition politicians, see more of the art by Los Carpinteros, and read interviews and dispatches from our reporters. Discuss the world and tell us what you think of our stories from a small planet at pbs.org. Next time. I got the world on a string. Americans with credit cards, 185 million. Interest and fees paid to the credit card companies, 101 billion. Big banks holding all the cards, priceless. Some things money and power can buy. For everything else you want to know about credit cards, there's Frontline. To order Frontline World State of Emergency on DVD, call PBS Home Video at 1-800-PLAY-PBS. Frontline World is made possible by Shell, supporting freedom of the press. As you can see, people are gathering around. And, and the independent journalists. How do you respond to these charges? Who tell the stories of our time. And by the John D. and Catherine T. MacArthur Foundation, helping to build a more just world. 
the William and Flora Hewlett Foundation, and by the Skoll Foundation. Supporting Frontline World through a grant to the PBS Foundation. This is PBS.